Yeah, I'm back. So let us start uh, with drug product that is under module three. Important section again under CMC module three. So as we have checked why DMA per said that is it is never approved or disapproved, but the drug product is always reviewed, right? And you get the approval. So why it is necessary and what is the importance of drug product dossier review? Again, uh, checking of your scientific information uh, and which determines the whether the information included in the drug product dossier is adequate to establish that the product is suitable for its intended use with respect to safety, efficacy, and quality. So have you observed uh, uh, more or less this uh, uh, S part and P part, more or less the sections are similar. Apart from this, pharmaceutical development and the uh, excipient section. If you see S part, in S part also there was a description and composition, manufacture, then control of your uh, uh, intermediates, the reference standard, container closure system, stability. So all those parts were there. Here you can see the difference between, you know, here additionally you are making pharmaceutical products. So you have to give the pharmaceutical development report and you are uh, using this control of ex the, the excipient and that is where, how you control those excipient. Uh, these two uh, parts are important. Okay. Uh, then uh, again, uh, I'm discussing that uh, this drug product review, how it becomes important because see, as you say, uh, when the product is in market and it is sold out years and years after you are getting marketing authorization, then only, uh, you know, uh, any, any manufacturers uh, become very confident. I still remember I worked in uh, Sandoz for 10 and a half years, Novartis for two and a half years. And Sandoz brand, what is brand like calcium Sandoz and uh, vitamin D3. And there are several other products like um, uh, Novalgene uh, and uh, what you say, diclofenac tablet, Oberan gel and all. Those brands exist in several years, more maybe more than 50 years. And that is how it determines a good sale of product is a successful marketing authorization. So we being uh the regulatory people have to take care of that the product uh, which we register we get the marketing approval uh, has authentic information and even during renewal of the application uh, you keep the uh, data in such a way that we prove that our drug product is safe efficacious and you know there will not be any queries or any recall and that's how we have to maintain uh, our brand years and years and that is a skill set required for any um, uh, pharma company uh, when we submit the applica application for getting marketing approval. So marketing uh, product registration certificate or the marketing authorization certificate is issued therefore by the health agency and it contains approval certificate, approved PIL and the approved SPC. So let us uh, discuss about uh, P1 to P8 part, okay? So more or less, you will see the repeat of uh, information under description and composition. Since you are making formulation, uh, you have to mention the information on the quantity dispensed with respect to API taking into assay, whether you are considering API as on basis or anhydrous basis, correct? Because in API, you are adding excipient, but uh, the API calculation is must, whether you are taking, sometimes what happen, uh, the amoxicillin trihydrate uh, we have seen, uh, there are salt exist, right? So how much you are taking the percentage purity as on, on as is basis or anhydrous basis. So it depends on uh, which product you are uh, manufacturing and uh, uh, which has, you know, the salt or uh, the anhydrous or whatever uh, type of uh, API you must be using in your formulation. 
So accordingly, you have to uh, give the information about quantity dispense with respect to the API and the weight adjustment with respect to the quantity of diluent needs to be provided as per the calculation of BMR is batch manufacturing record. And solvents not present in the product should be clearly mentioned. And this we have uh, discussed yesterday also. Some Sometimes we use... Uh, you know, the methanol or some uh, other solvents just to dissolve uh, a small quantity, uh, you know, in case uh, it's not highly soluble in water. So in that case, even if it not become a part of it is, it get evaporated, still it has to be included in your write-up or in the description and composition part. So you have to give the qualitative and quantitative uh, uh, certificate of colorants, okay, and everything you have to mention under this composition. Then coming to uh, pharmaceutical development. So pharmaceutical development, of course, the PDR we have to write as per ICHQ8, and ICHQ8 has described it very nicely how you have to capture each and every section under two. P 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, 2 2.6. Okay. It talks about the components of the drug product, then how you have developed your formulation right from your pre formulation, right? How you arrived at the prototype until uh, you uh, take the scale up batch. Okay. So, how you have uh, developed the formulation that has to be described nicely. Write-up should be very crisp and uh, it is understood by the reviewer and uh, manufacturing process development also we have to describe. Container closure, which is the suitable uh, for intended use because you have to study whether the PVC blister is good for my tablets or any other, like if it is a liquid oral, amber colored jar, brown colored or any uh, HDP jar is suitable, pet battle are suitable. You have to study it first uh, for the uh, CCI, like content, container interaction test, then leachability, extractability test. You have to prove that this is a container suitable for intended use. Then again, microbiological attributes also plays important role uh, in case of liquid orals and uh, microbial limit has become now uh, you know mandatory in Europe and US also, whether it is solid orals, liquid orals or whichever. Compatibility also uh, is important when you uh, have the, you know, the, what do you say, amoxicillin, tiohydrate, uh, the oral suspension, you know, the powder for oral suspension and all those uh, liquid orals uh, will have the uh, you know compatibility. So coming to uh, this point, uh, 3,2,P3 is the manufacturer and under which it is again divided into 3.1, 3.2, uh, and 3.3, 4, and 5. So this is again important uh, topic uh, under this uh, uh, P part. You know you have to give the information about the manufacturer, batch formula, description, and control of critical steps. This is also we have discussed more or less, but the special checks, if you ask me, oh, the batch formula should be given for the exhibit as well as the proposed commercial batch. And for multiple strength, like, you know, if you have 5 mg, 10 mg, 20 mg, the concept of common blend and the blend as an individual strength needs to be mentioned. And the manufacturing process, and the in-process control are to be matched with the product development report. And if at all uh, you are uh, holding this product, then proper whole time study protocol and the whole time study report for the intermediates needs to be provided. Again, critical parameters uh, uh, during your process validation should always be concordant with the product development. So uh, while writing this manufacturing process, the write-up should be given as a generic, uh, it should be generic in nature. And we should not stress upon, you know, the manufacturing operational parameters as it may vary during actual manufacturing process. Sometimes what happens, we have habit of writing, you know, minute, minute things, but think that uh, our application is going uh, to be reviewed by the 
health authority, uh, I said, sorry, you know, the reviewer sitting at uh, EDQM or uh, the US FDA. And that is why unnecessary information or uh, very minute details have to be avoided uh, because this may lead to unnecessary variation post approval. And uh, you have to, uh, you know, give the correlation between the process validation protocol and the process validation report with whatever batches you must have executed. And the BMR, BPR should be attached. So this is the special check under this uh, P2 section. Then the P, uh, P4 section is the control of excipient, uh, wherein uh, you have to give the specification, whatever excipient you are using in your formulation, then method of analysis, test procedure, analytical method validation, justification. And if at all those excipients are of human origin or animal origin. So, you know, we have to provide those TAC, BSC certificate. And this is also a pretty straightforward section, but I will walk through the actual section like uh, which we uh, write and compile in CTD format under module three. Then it is P5, that is the control of uh, finished product. And this is also, we have more or less discussed uh, under our uh, API, that is the uh, S part. And uh, you have to take care of uh, controlling how you are controlling your finished product uh, by giving the specification. Uh, usually uh, the release specification and the shelf life specifications are attached, uh, but uh, some people, uh, you know, the, there is an industry practice, it varies from one company to another company. So it depends on you, your internal policy, what it says, but uh, sometimes if they asked, uh, you know, the assessor asked, we have to provide it. Then uh, Apart from specification or uh, the method of analysis, how you are going to analyze each parameters and uh, uh, you have to justify, of course, uh, and for specification, you have to always refer to ICHQ 6A and the analytical method validation also, you have to refer to ICHQ 2 and Q3. And you have to provide three minimum, uh, three batches uh, data under the batch analysis. And the, uh, you have to characterize the impurities uh, and provide the data. And uh, finally, you have to justify each and every test which is mentioned under your specification. Are you with me? Are you not sleeping, right? Say yes or no? No. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, fully alert. Thank you, thank you. Uh, because I'm only talking, I thought you're listening to me or not. Uh, so. These are the special check, uh, you know, some uh, some points, of course, uh, repeatable because we have considered and uh, we have discussed plenty of time uh, during yesterday's session and today's S part discussion, you know. So under this uh, B5 control of finished product, make sure that your specification is scientifically designed and level of impurities need to be justified as per ICH, depending on the daily dose of the drug. If you refer ICH, Q3 has given a very nice chart, you know, the daily dose, how you calculate uh, the threshold, you know, the ident uh, identified uh, threshold. So you have to uh, list all the identified specified impurity, unknown impurities, known impurities, and if at all uh, your product uh, has the genotoxic impurities, we have to study and, uh, you know, and we have to study. It may arise maybe during your stability or, you know, uh, in future. Uh, we might know na, some uh, ingredients are highly incompatible uh, uh, while during stability when it uh, it is exposed to the environment, you know, the uh, temperature, humidity and all. So you have to study all these parameters uh, during your development and um, uh, validation. Because of validation, we come to know also that our method is, uh, you know, rugged and it is robust. It can be used as a stability indicating method. So whatever method, suppose if it is a monograph method or it is in-house, See to that all parameters are validated. Sometimes what happens, uh, there is a tendency that if it is a USP monograph, EP monograph method, we go for only verification and we go for certain parameters like uh, uh, the recovery, you know, and um, specificity and uh, 
ruggedness and uh, only uh, you know typical four or five days but as per my knowledge you know i would always suggest uh, all uh, industry people to go for entire validation full as per ichq2 and ichq3 for uh, related substance or the residual solvent okay and uh, of course you have to validate assay related substance dissolution method residual solvent and uh, whatever test uh, you are going uh, and uh, uh, for uh, sorry whatever test we are capturing under specification it has to be validated and justified then uh, force uh, degradation photostability studies also need to be presented batch analysis uh, two batches uh, need to be presented but always i uh, uh, suggest to go for three batches minimum and a quality uh, data will have to be given in module 2 and signed coa will have to be presented in module 3 of the dust year then uh, coming to p6 uh, the reference standard the same way uh, how we discussed that uh, reference standards are always uh, very costly and that is how we had to uh, make the working standard uh, by giving those reference uh, standard data and you have to qualify, right? And uh, the same, uh, more or less same discussion is applicable uh, for this. Then container closure system. Uh, this is also like IR spectra of container uh, polythene in case of blister path needs to be submitted and identification for the material of constriction, MOC, what we call. Uh, then supplier details consisting of compliance certificate declaration as per European directives. And of course, the container diagram needs to be provided for the body and cap if you are using the HDP jars uh, as a uh, final pack for your this. Even if uh, you add blister pack, you can give nice picture in this section. Then the last section is the stability, uh, which is again uh, divided into 8.1, 8.2, 8.3. And the same way you have to discuss about your stability protocol. You have to draw the conclusion, you know, the shelf life, the stability, what all conditions you have conducted the stability studies, you know, the stability or shelf life specifications and all. And of course, you have to give the post stability of the protocol and commitment. And you have to provide minimum six month accelerated data, as I mentioned earlier, storage condition expiry date, and the summary of stability data. Then there is two more section under module three we have to provide, uh, that is 3 to A and 3 to R. So under this section, uh, you have to include the facilities and whatever equipment or any adventitious agent safety evaluation or novel excipient. In most of the cases, the A2 and A3 is not applicable, but you can provide the facility and equipment details. And under P2 original information, some people attach process validation protocols. So again, this also varies from uh, you know country to country and the company to uh, company. So uh, in this way, we have finished uh, with three to P part, right from P1 to P8. So now uh, I will open one one section. Uh, you know, there is no need to go through each and every section, but uh, I am trying to uh, open uh, the important section which uh, may be helpful uh, for you. Uh, just give me a minute. Uh, let us start with first uh, description and composition. Then P2 I will uh, discuss and the packaging and container system. Uh, can you see uh, my screen now? Yes, yes. Okay. So this is a typical section of description and composition of the drug product. You will have your company header, okay, versioning and all. The first is your uh, TOC, table of content. If at all you are attaching figures uh, or the, you know, list of tables, list of figures we have discussed yesterday. Uh, so 
under this uh, description and composition you can write the you know scope all names of the finished product should be stated in beginning of the document and based on this a clear abbreviation should be chosen and used throughout the document all drug product components should be listed in this section so we have uh, discussed like uh, whether any solvent gases used but the, those will not remain in the final finished product still you have to mention in your composition okay so it must comply with the description specified in this section under 5.1 so whatever description and composition you are giving it should also be hyperlinked with the specification section and uh, the research form should be named according to the official name of the standard term like tablet coated tablet or film coated tablet or transdermal patches you know and for complex form like in some regions like australia the qualitative composition of proprietary component can be replaced by the reference to appropriate drug master file okay so put the text that is imprinted on the product uh, sometimes see embossing is done or uh, you know uh, uh, in case of capsule i have seen uh, some company mark or the size or something is given so you can uh, you know put that text also and then imprint on the drug product should be also specified that is the imprint used in the pilot validation or e batch exhibit batch and the proposed commercial batch so this is how the you can capture the pictorial this is a typical pictorial diagram for the hormonal tablet because in hormonal tablet uh, why i have captured this example because there are two diagram we have to provide for the active tablets and the inert tablets because uh, you know the pregnancy uh, to stop the pregnancy there are hormone uh, those are uh, the 21 tablets are taken first and then the remaining seven you know so those are the inert tablets is uh, given to the women so so how the pictorial diagram you can capture that you have to see based on your product so this is a just an example i am giving a different example so that you learn uh, in a better way you know then note the color shades are of differentiating active uh, tablet and inner tablet and not representing actual color of the tablet correct so whatever you are adding color and you have to give the file note uh, to the assessor the reviewer you have to specify clearly okay so then the composition you have to uh, write down the composition that you know if you have solid oral form you have to add per unit dose you know, each tablet like per milligram per tablet or microgram because hormones are uh, generally prescribed in microgram mcg then the injectable liquids per ml or milligram per ml like that so dosage strength you can express uh, as you know percent and where a drug substance is a salt or hydrate declare where needed in terms of salt and the free active moiety as i said amlodipine bisalate amlodipine uh, trihydrate you know so you have to decide uh, whether you have to use uh, as a salt and uh, which is equivalent to you know amlodipine so same way you can uh, amoxicillin amlodipine Uh, or there are you know different molecules you can see what molecule you are handling then a uh, list of water purified uh, with each process if you use in both the granulation or coating processes you have to capture uh, the numbers are rounded okay uh, there should be uh, the same number of digits should be used after the full stop usually we follow three digits you know after the period like suppose 50 kg so 50.000 uh, we up to 3 decimal we use so active substance flavors colorant so should always be expressed with three numbers then uh, give the name like according to pharmacopeia uh, with which the excipient complies right if your excipient complies as per pharm europa and usp or nf give reference and reference number in the reference to standard column correct 
So for non-pharmacopoeal excipient, identify unambiguously and ensure that same name is used as will used elsewhere in the dossier. Okay, IH is normally used in for in-house specification. For Europe, colors used must be comply with EU directives. Okay, therefore use E numbers as reference and give the function of ingredients as declared in the section of M, M3 to P2. So if a manufacturing overage is uh, you are adding, uh, this is not declared in the document, but in section of P3.2, that is batch formula, and in section of P3.3, that is description of manufacturing process and the process control. Okay. And if an overfill of injection for injections is used, this is mentioned in a footnote under the composition table. Okay. So in this way, uh, see, we help all the companies for preparing the templates, for preparing all CTD, CTD module. And of course, industry practice varies, uh, but uh, more or less it is harmonized. When I used to work like uh, 14 years, 15 years back in the industry, uh, there was a huge difference, you know, and now due to advanced technology, lots of things have changed. Uh, so this is a typical example of, you know, the, you can nicely put up a table uh, for name of ingredient. Suppose if you have coated tablet, then you give the formulation of core tablet, other ingredient, core tablet weight, coating, then imprint total film coated. So like that, you know, you decide based on your composition, how you are to present the data. But this is a typical example I've given uh, for the tablet. So uh, this is a composition uh, which we uh, have covered under the description and composition of the drug product. Then suppose if at all your product uh, contains uh, elemental ion, the ion ingredient, then see to that you calculate, you have to declare the elemental ion. Okay. So only applicable if ion color is used in the formulation and the recommended daily dose is one tablet per day. So elemental ion calculation is like this, you know, you have to consider atomic weight of elemental ion oxide and then out of which atomic weight of ion is this much. So total quantity of ferric oxide of iron, suppose if, if you are using 0 0.750 milligram per tablet, then you have to calculate how much will be the elemental ion that comes to 0 0.52 milligram. So as per the reference drug package insert, the two active pills may be taken on same day if the dose is missed. Okay, so the quantity of elemental ion for two tablet will be how much? 1.04. So this is also very important when we use uh, iron oxide red color in your product or in your coating material or somewhere. Then the type of container closure. Okay, so uh, whatever uh, you must have selected your container closure system, you have to give the brief description under this uh, packaging section and you have to hyperlink with your P7 section, which is container closure system also. And of course, this becomes part of your, this uh, part one also, P1.3 part. And uh, uh, they suppose uh, I have given two, two examples. One is blister pack and aluminum foil pouch. Okay. So two different primary container closure systems are proposed for the drug product. So how you have to write like this, a PVC or uh, you know PCT, uh, you give the full form also, okay. PVC, PVDC or PVC, PEC, whatever, thermoform film, which is molded into blister cavities and sealed with an aluminum foil backing. So this is the way how we uh, give the write-up in the container closure system. If at all you are using aluminum foil pouch, you give like, right like this, multi-layer aluminum foil or polymer laminate, which is heat sealed together to form a pouch containing two dosage unit. If it is a single dosage unit, you write down single or multiple, you know. So whatever is your product and whatever you, you must have selected uh, the ingredients, the composition, the packaging, 
So everything should come under this description and uh, composition because this is a P1, which is important section, the part one only, okay, uh, under uh, drug product. So when the, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, the, the, as I said, the reviewer picks up uh, your uh, document, he should be very happy, you know, to see, oh my God, all the information is captured nicely and the table of content is also given. Now, this is also automation. You can go directly, you know, to the reference uh, page. So that is how you should provide uh, your information nicely and submit uh, into the dossier. Now, like P1, uh, we'll discuss about P2 or P3. P2 we'll discuss first, which is again important document. Can you see P2? Hello? Yeah, yeah, you can see. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, you can see P2 pharmaceutical development. Yes, yes, we can see. Okay. The, the, thank you. Yes. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Because I have changed the screen. So I wanted to ensure whether you are looking at the same screen which I am referring. Okay. So this is the pharmaceutical development, which is again very, very important section and any reviewer would like to go through it, okay? The PDR, so PDR always has to be written as per ICH Q8. So entire Q8, if you, uh, you know, refer nicely, you will come to know, you know, how to write this very effectively, how you communicate nicely to the reviewer that, look, I have developed a population which is uh, very good, very robust. We have taken, uh, you know, all point into, consideration all critical parameters also captured compatibility studies are done or we have selected container closure system we have given the you know clinical data everything you have to mention so uh, to begin with you have to give the gist of you know how your formulation development is done okay because this is only section of ctd that does not provide a regulatory commitment however it helps the regulatory reviewer to establish an understanding of the development of the product and why certain process controls need to be applied and others can be omitted. And it can also be used to support future changes and optimization. Okay, so the pharmaceutical development section should describe the knowledge that establishes uh, that the type of dosage form selected and the formulation proposed are suitable for intended use, right? And this section should include sufficient information in each part of the part to provide an understanding of the development of drug product and its manufacturing process should include things that did and did not work. And that is why I see whenever you are working in R&D, I work personally for six years in R&D department. And that is how I learned to write nice PDR. Because see, always uh, uh, when you start development, uh, it, it is never uh, right for the first time, you know, the right first time. So you have to take several batches, correct? Pilot batches. And then only you uh, arrive at the prototype declaration. And uh, how you capture that data, how you arrive from the zero, you know, level to this, um, uh, suppose if you have taken uh, 10 to 15 batches, so how you compile the data, how you uh, present in front of the regulatory reviewer, that is a skill set required uh, for us, like all regulatory professional. So you have to give the summary of tables, graphs. Uh, these are encouraged, you know, when they add clarity and facilitate the review. So at a minimum, those aspects of drug substance, excipients, container closure system, then manufacturing process that are critical to product quality should be determined and control strategies are justified. So this section is first produced for the original marketing application and can be updated later on to support new knowledge gained over the life cycle of the product, correct? So first time when you are going for the uh, marketing authorization, you have to provide this document but subsequently of course when you are into market for 50 years 60 years old 
you can eventually update because you have gained knowledge so much of knowledge by that time right you are in sometimes the entire process might have modified due to advanced technology sometimes the excipients are changed you know sometimes packaging material you may change over the period of time so during your life cycle management uh, of that product you can uh, always uh, uh, edit and uh, send the updated version to the regulators so coming to the uh, after you know giving the gist of your uh, formulation development you start writing about your components of your drug product and you write down what api the drug substance you are using suppose if you are using acetaminophen so if it has a common name yes it has a common name called paracetamol so whenever uh, you don't have the common name you just say not applicable this section is not applicable okay but see to that you write this four section right the drug substance is so and so chemical name is so and so xyz common name is xyz molecular weight is xyz molecular weight formula and molecular weight so in case of well known api only summary could be provided in this paragraph okay if it is a very well known like paracetamol um, amlodipine these are all uh, you know naproxen old age molecule so diclofenac sodium ibuprofen so you can only add the summary uh, of into this para and where a physico chemical parameters of the drug substance is demonstrated to be variable and critical for the quality of the product it needs to be controlled by appropriate method with acceptance criteria and active substance specification or by other appropriate means have you understood the physico chemical parameters of the drug substance is demonstrated to the to be variable and if it is any critical parameters for, to demonstrate you know that drug substance you have to capture in this section then uh, of course uh, since we are uh, developing the product you have to check for the solubility which may affect your formulation and uh, uh, whether it is highly soluble highly permeable low soluble low permeable so dst classification you know the you can go for those pharmaceutical uh, classification and uh, select which is the uh, in which solvent it is more soluble more permeable and of course then which analytical method is uh, selected you know the choice of analytical method you have to mention here uh, then water content of course it can also affect the parameters then crystal properties particle size these all parameters are extremely important which may affect during the stability right and that is how uh, when you are into r&d uh, developing you have to check all the solubility water content particle size crystal uh, properties polymorphism because these all are interrelated and it may affect your uh, the bioavailability the bioequivalence you know when we uh, move forward with the formulation so these parameters are interrelated and may be uh, uh, need to be considered in combination and suitable limits for the key parameters affecting bioavailability needs to be derived from batches Uh, of the product showing acceptable in vivo performance okay that is in vivo is bioequivalence in vitro of course we uh, conduct the dissolution test and we meet the sink condition and then we move forward right so we have to test your drug product into different media starting with water 0.1 normal hcl then buffer like 4.6 6.8 phosphate buffer acetate buffer and accordingly you develop your sink condition and go forward with the in vivo in vitro you have and in vivo correlation you have to establish and present uh, in the pdr so the compatibility of the drug substance with excipient listed in section uh, p1 that is description and composition should be evaluated so whatever uh, you have mentioned under composition like uh, suppose if uh, my tablet comprises of 10 other excipient you have to check whether each ingredient each excipient is compatible with your api or not so for which we have to perform compatibility studies 
with the one is to one ratio and uh, you have to uh, put it in the uh, uh, the stress stability data is uh, uh, attached uh, uh, in a tabular format from, from the batch to batch variation you have to conclude the results okay so here what i mean to say the result of preliminary stability study should be provided as supportive data if available so during compatibility you may come to know that all green gradient are compatible with your api or not or any one ingredient which is uh, contributing more water or an lod is encouraging or uh, it is highly unstable you know because of the moisture content or uh, the crystal because of crystal property uh, it may uh, give uh, some you know more hardness or uh, friability or it affects any other parameters that you have to check and put up in this write up okay then uh, i i hope ap about the uh, drug substance you are pretty clear how we have to capture in this section then come to xcpn that is 32p 21.2 xcpn so whatever xcpn uh, you are using the xcpn chosen their concentration in milligram per ml or milligram per tablet in your drug product and their characteristic that can influence the drug product performance or manufacturability should be discussed relative to respective function of each excipient and this include all substances used in the manufacture of drug product whether they appear in the finished product or not correct so this we have mentioned that uh, whatever solvent you are using okay the substance used in the manufacturer whether they appear in the finished product or not you can include in this and uh, i have quoted some example for the solid oral dosage form uh, so in my solid dosage form uh, um, i have used you know two three excipient like anhydrous lactose so suppose if you are using uh, this lactose which has the say uh, other name as uh, the grade as super tab 21a an and it is monograph like it is available in us pan so what is its function it's used as a diluent and i will say that anhydrous lactose uh, was selected as intraglandular diluent mainly to enhance the flow of granules and due to its better compressibility and our rld the innovator has also used in his same formulation and that is why you know uh, we are comparing and we are justifying that similar ingredient the excipient is used as per the innovator as per the rld reference listed drug so you can capture all the excipient here i have shown only the two example like anhydrous lactose and microcrystalline cellulose and how you summarize you know the summary of uh, information of all suppose if you are using 10 excipient you uh, you should be uh, having 10 rows you know 10 different excipient then as i mentioned earlier the compatibility of excipient with other excipient were relevant uh, for example uh, you know combination of preservatives in dual uh, preservative system should be established then supporting stability data may be sufficient okay then the ability of excipient example diluent disintegrant to provide their intended functionality so how this section is hyperlinked with other section you know that that is written here so uh, you have to have a good write up and you should know to which section it should be hyperlinked when you submit your application in ectd format okay then come to your uh, and uh, also of course we have discussed this also excipient which is of animal origin are required to meet the eo requirement okay for the tacbac uh, okay then example of solid uh, dosage form uh, here it is given uh, the different physical properties of active substance and excipient may also lead to uneven distribution and alteration in drug delivery to the target site so development mm -hmm. studies should be therefore demonstrate 
homogeneity and the performance characteristic of bulk and unit dose dosage form. Then again, under drug development, uh, drug product, you know, we have seen uh, uh, the drug substance excipient. Now we talk about 32P2.2, that is drug product, and under which you talk about the formulation development of this drug product. So here also, uh, you give the brief summary of uh, uh, describing the development of formulation, including identification of those attributes that are critical to quality of the drug product. It should be provided. And the summary should highlight the evolution of the formulation design from initial concept up to the final design. So nowadays, you must have heard about QBD, quality by design. You know, how you arrive to the POC, proof of concept studies. So how you have uh, taken care of QBD, that part you have to mention here. And uh, whatever patches you must have developed and you have arrived uh, uh, to the POC proof of concept studies, then you go for the clinical formulation and uh, take the uh, final uh, you know, formulation to the clinical trial. And how you present the data for uh, the in-house, like I, I said in vitro and in vivo, you have to present here the dissolution or in vivo, like BE studies should be discussed when appropriate with a cross reference to the studies in model five. Uh, any excipient ranges include uh, this P3.2 patch formula should be justified. And the different clinical or commercial formulation tested should be described and their different composition and parameters should also be explained and justified. Okay. Overages. Uh, generally, uh, any health authority uh, is uh, not encouraging us to put overages. This also we have discussed, I think, because in old days, due to manufacturing loss, we used to justify, you know, then we used to add 2% to 5% overages. But if at all, suppose uh, if there is a loss during manufacture, uh, it's really happening, you know, in some critical uh, uh, product manufacturing, then you have to justify. Otherwise, highly it is discouraged. But whenever you want to justify, you justify in a, like amount of overage, reason for the overage and justification of the amount of overage. Then the physical, chemical and biological properties. Of course, uh, you are testing for pH, step solubility, water content, permeability, resolution, particle size, aggregation, polymorphism, rheological properties, biological properties, etc. Means not all tests, depending on your product, you have to mention in this section, you have to discuss. And of course, the discussion should be cross reference to any relevant stability data in your P8.3. And the summary of dissolution development should be included in this section with cross reference to module 5, that is clinical study. And uh, the justification of dissolution test should be included in. P5.6, that is justification of specification. So here, a couple of examples I have given, like solid dosage form, homogeneity, disintegration, testing, dissolution, you know. Then uh, case one, suppose immediate release dosage form, modified release dosage form. What are the precautionary measures you have to um, take care of while development and how the data is captured? Uh, what type of you know correlation and has to be written? So everything uh, actually we being a consultant, a GMP, RA consultant, we help client to you know write down all the sections as per the regulatory requirement. Uh, manufacturing process development, of course, this also we have uh, discussed uh, during the API section. And uh, here also you have to, of course, give the justification. What are the uh, description of manufacturing process, process control, and you have to justify. And of course, the appropriateness of equipment used 
for the intended product should be discussed and we should be in a position to demonstrate that manufacturing method which you have selected is robust is robust for the preparation of dosage form and by using your starting material of the appropriate quality and the process should be fully characterized to justify a range of operating conditions because see sometimes we uh, say that you have to compress the tablet at uh 25 plus minus 5 uh, you know degree suppose if you are maintaining temperature and humidity uh in that area because of the hygroscopic material then you have to mention those plus minus ranges okay in even fluid fluid bed dryer whatever temperature you must have selected you have to validate depending on the criticality of that process so everything should be a uh, uh, you know part of this process development uh, report and uh, for sterile product the choice of appropriate method of sterilization should be justified and significant differences between the manufacturing process used to uh, produce pivotal clinical batches or the primary stability batches and the process described in section uh, p3.3 um, that is description of manufacturing process and process control should be discussed just wait i am having water <laughs> so this should demonstrate no difference in performance manufacturability and quality of the product and um, information should be presented in the way that facilitate the comparison of processes and the corresponding batch analysis information in this section m3 to p5 1 okay and the, so the information include the identity that is batch number and use of batches produced that is bioequivalent study batch number the manufacturing site the batch size and any significant equipment difference okay principal size and all then come to container closure system uh, the choice and the rational for selection of container closure system is again uh, we have discussed in uh, p1 also right how you have selected that pvc pvp blister we have given the pictorial diagram also so the choice of material of primary packaging material should be justified and the suitability of the container closure system used for the storage transportation that is shipping and use of drug product should be discussed in this section consider the choice of material protection from moisture and light photo stability data should be provided under this section and the compatibility of the material along with of course material of construction the compatibility of material with dosage form the including sorption to container and leaching this also we have discussed cci safety of material performance reproducibility of dose delivery from device when presented as a part of drug product and when warranted information on leachables should also be included in this section under p5.1 specification and the section 5.5 that is characterization of impurity also if leachables are confirmed through shelf life as part of formal stability studies the results would reported in section p8.3 that is stability data okay then uh, we move forward to microbiological attributes you can just read this icc or cci is same only uh, what i was talking container closure interaction this is very important test when we are using uh, containers like pet bottle sterile uh, you know bottle for injection so infusions and all then uh, p2.5 that is microbiological attributes so where appropriate the microbiological attributes of the dosage form should be discussed including the rational for not performing microbial limit test 
for non-steroid products based on the equilibrium related humidity value and the selection and the effectiveness of preservative. You might have heard about if, if uh, this uh, preservative efficacy test, PET, AET, antimicrobial effectiveness test and the preservative effectiveness test. So uh, the selection of this PET uh, in the product containing antimicrobial preservative or the antimicrobial effectiveness of the product that are in inherently antimicrobial. So what I mean to say here, uh, you have to give the rational, uh, if at all you are not conducting any microbial limit test. And if you are providing, uh, you are conducting the PET or AT, you have to uh, give the right of how, why you have selected that uh, method. And for sterile product, the integrity of the container closure system, like ICC, you have to um, perform. And uh, like uh, antimicrobial preservative effectiveness should be demonstrated against the both bacterial and the fungal growth. Then reporting of initial development work on preservative efficacy testing should be presented here. The lowest specified concentration of antimicrobial preservative should be demonstrated here. And the content of preservative during shelf life is also controlled by appropriate finished product specification. And it should be shown that preservative efficacy is maintained at the lower level of the specification at the end of proportional. So where relevant, you give the microbial challenge test under the testing that simulate patient use should be performed and documented. That is for in-use stability studies. <clears throat> the last section, compatibility. And uh, this, uh, when the compatibility of the duct product with the reconstitution diluent or the dosage device, example, no precipitation of duct substance in solution, no sorption or injection vessels should be addressed. And <clears throat> this information should cover uh, the recommended in-use shelf life at the recommended storage temperature, okay? Example, solid uh, dosage from the capacity of chemical incompatibilities or instability is clearly less significant in solids than in liquids or semi-solid media. However, when the SPC recommends dilution or mixing of the solid dosage form, for example, with drinks, prior to administration, appropriate compatibility studies may be required. Okay. So in this way, uh, we have uh, completed uh, P2, and uh, now I will uh, take some break because continuously I'm talking. So thank you for your kind attention. I hope you understood both the section very well. Uh, couple of sections are repetitive. So those we have, uh, which we have already covered under S section uh, will not again repeated in the under P part. So uh, two to three more section we'll discuss after a break. And then uh, today's session will be over. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so we will discuss about the container closure system. So this is again, uh, important part under P7. Uh, we will cover P7 and P8, uh, the stability uh, report. And then we will finish our session, today's session. So under this section, uh, when you start, uh, of course, you have to give the table of content and uh, explanatory note is for you guys, like in italics, uh, in this template, the proposed text is given in black and the example are given in green and instruction in italic blue. So under description, you have to give the description about the container closure system and uh, identity of material of construction that is MOC for each primary packaging component and its specification, right? And the specification should include description and identification that is critical dimension with drawings when appropriate and non compendial method with validation should be included. Because sometimes what happens, you, you, you can use the in-house material 
and uh, you can provide the validation data okay and uh, you can uh, give the reference of uh, how it is suitable for intended use and give the reference to p2 okay the uh, CA, uh, cpmp guidelines for plastic primary packaging material and indicate uh, in few words the type of packaging material only like primary packaging material which is used uh, you know the identity of this material needs to be stated either in the description or in more complex cases under a separate chapter as illustrated here after so uh, suppose if your product comprises of material like blister pack composed of this okay so how it is written under p1 section same way you have to mention in this p7 section and if at all you are using vials this is another example so vials sealed with a stopper which is held in place with an aluminum cap okay then the compliance declaration uh, as per uh, farm europa monograph is uh, required to prove that uh, you know the uh, material is in compliance with the directives and it is safe for use you have to take it from your packaging supplier and it has to be attached and uh, under this section, if you attach, you have to just uh, give the hyperlink and the declaration of uh, compliance you have to give with respect to this plastic material. Then come to drawing. As I shown earlier, uh, the drawing are more uh, appropriate if you uh, insert the images of your packaging material. And of course, the drawing should be include only critical dimensions for packaging without critical dimension. An example statement like following could be. So which are not having dimension, critical dimension, then you can uh, have a write-up like this, you know, for suppose if you have unit dose uh, container like blister. So for blister, you can give the configuration how this uh, uh, blister is, you know, uh, uh, information looks like like PVC Eclar film you are using. Then you write down this film is manufactured of of polyvinyl chloride and whatever you know. Film software vapor transmission rate protection. So uh, uh, critical information you have to add into this, and uh, you have to uh, say that uh, this aluminum foil for blister is a heat sealable lacquered aluminum foil laminate backing consists of following layers so of course this depends on what is your packaging material used for your uh, product okay so these are the examples given and the statement from the manufacturer attesting to acceptability for use in the europe is provided in attachment then uh, the component information, this is an example. Again, these are all illustrative example. You have to look into your internal policy, your own company policy and apply your own template. So these, these are the template which is uh, used generally okay, uh, from our end and uh, based on my knowledge, my industry experience, uh, uh, experience we have designed this template. But not necessarily that you have to write in this way only. You can modify as per your own company template. And of course, you have to meet the regulatory guidances, European guidelines, ICH guidelines, and few directives. So uh, this is an example of blister or lead stock material. Like, see, I have given the description 200 mm to 250 micron PVC uh, for the Eclar Amber, you know, so who is the supplier? So description of this PVC Eclar is this, and this is its supplier, okay? So uh, this is different size. You can see this is 200 mm, and this is 176 mm. And what is the backing material we have to say? And uh, uh, you can see there are three different supplier for two, this, this is same supplier for this two. And uh, for aluminum foil, there is another supplier. So you have to capture all the information of your primary packaging material, uh, make a nice table and write down uh, the description in this way. 
then the composition and properties of those blister you know the material and the what is the quantity used to form this blister okay then vendor information is provided in the attachment then acceptance and suitability data uh, that is supplier coa msds you can uh, suitability testing you can attach and give the hyperlink okay you can refer add a column here uh, please refer to attachment an extra one or an extra two a b c d whatever then for the glass vials the vials are made up of colorless borosilicate glass uh, you know uh, which meets the requirements of current palm europa stoppers the stoppers are made up of you know brittle rubber so you have to give the brief description of material uh, which is used for your own pharmaceutical product then again you have to include the specifications and the test procedures as per the nda the notice to applicants okay uh, under this p7 section and the specification should limit it uh, and reflect the testing performed by the manufacturing at receipt of the material ensure its identity and the essential features so you have to give uh, typically appearance identification dimension and other like tightness arsenic for glass vials sterility testing and so on and you have to insert the ir spectrum you know ir spectra is an attachment for the packaging material then specification for packaging components are provided like in table okay so this is the typical uh, packaging material specification appearance identity of the material dimensions and all what is the requirement what are the methods used for testing these parameters you know then batch analysis you have to uh, provide minimum three batches data you know the, then the you have to attach the certificate of analysis so then uh, secondary packaging uh, it is always advisable to add uh, you know few details about the secondary packaging as well uh, although it doesn't come in contact with uh, your uh, material the product but uh, the functional uh, you know the for uh, non functional secondary uh, packaging component uh, only a brief description should be provided and for for the functional secondary packaging component additional information like braille certificate for secondary packaging material mvtr cardboard folding box you know so these are the uh, secondary packaging material you have to include into this and in this way we have uh, you know uh, concluded about this p7 section and i hope it is pretty clear now how this p7 uh, section to be written now the last section uh, i will uh, cover about uh, uh, this one uh, what i said uh, stability uh, section uh, we will cover can you see the stability hello yes yes we can see yeah yes okay. it's clear yes, yes. thank yes. you thank you so as i mentioned earlier stability is again divided into 8.1 8.2 8.3 8 out of which 8.3 section we are going to discuss because this is also a most important document based on which we derive the shelf life also correct so in this section also you have to discuss about a uh, couple of things which are uh, important uh, like purpose of stability report is uh, you know uh, to present stability data and the proposed shelf life for drug product packaged in uh, so and so you know for all climatic zone 1 2 3 4 4a 4b so it depends uh, on uh, uh, which climatic zone you are uh, conducting your studies and uh, you give the brief introduction that product xyz is manufactured and packaged at uh, you know your company name all stability testing and storage you know stability sample described in this summary is performed as per your company okay in india or in europe then you uh, write down the composition of your drug product then the stability plan you know the current commercial batch size so and so 
manufactured for stability and then the production batch sizes from so and so will continue to be manufactured therefore the batch size used in stability are fully representative of the future commercial batch okay and you give the uh, you know details about in the table form like what are the batches what is the drug product batch number batch type batch size date of manufacture site of manufacture and give the batch details like suppose if you are using drug substance two different leonorgestrel norgestimate so and uh, uh, the site of manufacture the lot number is different so mention that you know so these are just hypothetical example i have captured uh, from different sources and uh, you have to mention the packaging configuration which packaging material you are used uh, during stability then description justification if at all you are using matrixing and bracketing uh, to avoid the load uh, to the analytical department then stability studies information uh, in which uh, you know when you started the study stability start date bulk batch number package lot number and so on so as long as uh, you are aware of uh, what kind of product you are handling you know like what kind of information also to be captured right it may differ again product to product company to company then you have to attach the shelf life specification also and analytical test like what all test you are it is applicable uh, so suppose sometimes what happens uh, Uh, all tests are not mandatory uh, till the shelf life, so you can omit some test, but you have to justify whatever you are omitting. You know, uh, you have to justify, uh, and you give the nice matrix. Uh, you know, for analytical, because uh, matrixing and bracketing is allowed uh, in some cases. Suppose if you have three strains, cetirizine tablet, five mg, ten mg, twenty mg, then there will be huge analytical load. the analytical department so you have to nicely uh, capture all the data in your stability protocol give the matrixing bracketing and uh, apply and uh, as per the your stability uh, study protocol you conduct the stability and uh, collect the data and uh, you know nicely present over here in this section then long term stability accelerated stability how you have performed at what uh, you know, nicely you can present in a table okay so this is also of course uh, this will vary as per your own uh, company format however uh, uh, we recommend to use you know uh, some pages in uh, landscape uh, some pages in the portrait form Uh, generally stability data is used so always uh, you present it with the landscape format then proposed shelf life uh, how you derived uh, you know uh, the shelf life uh, so proposed shelf life and storage condition you can discuss in this section then in a typical storage uh, condition is we have to mention that also you can mention over here store below 30 degree and all and uh, special testing uh, storage condition if you have this was because of hormonal product there was a, uh, you know special testing storage condition so you can mention accordingly 50 degree testing plan then photo stability testing plan if at all you are doing photo stability you can mention because this is again a important document based on which you get the approval so p2 is one more important and the quality overall summary is again the most important document so this is about the atpt antimicrobial preservative efficacy plan the challenge test as per usp or ep uh, you can mention and uh, you conduct the stability at some point see here also you can omit at what level like 0 month 6 month 9 month 12 months yearly then after 24 months you can uh, you know conduct at two condition 25 60 30 75 like that. 
So whatever you are doing, you have to just uh, present in uh, table format and uh, you can draw the conclusion in 8.1 section. This is 8.3 what I have uh, shown it to you. Okay. So like that, you can uh, prepare all the template uh, nicely and uh, present the data in front of the regulatory bodies and um, get the submission successfully. And you will get, of course, the approval uh, as soon as possible. If you communicate effectively, uh, and you give a nice write-up in all the sections, uh, important sections, as I mentioned, quality oral summary, P2, P7, P8. In uh, API also, uh, Model 3, uh, duct substance part also, critical parameters, uh, stability data, how you develop the manufacturing development report, validation data, and validation of analytical methods. So in this way, uh, we have finished today's session. Uh, I'm sorry, it was a bit exhaustive session today. Uh, but uh, fortunately, we have covered all the points. And thanks for your patient hearing. And now I will uh, just uh, post a quiz session. Uh, take 10, 15 minutes uh, to solve all the quiz session. And then I will post the feedback form. Uh, you have to give the genuine feedback and if you are happy, you say happy. If you are not happy, then also it is okay. Where you want me to improve in which area, you can write it uh, with a genuine uh, you know, uh, reason. And if you would like to have different session, you write down those names also, the topic name I mean to say. And once again, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, MF uh, team for your support and organizing uh, this uh, seminar for uh, Greece people. And please keep in touch. Thank you very much.